Hello bookworms! Today I'm going to be doing another new video series. So this is the first one. I'm calling this New to the Queue, which I first saw that title used on Jamie from the Perpetual Page Turners blog, and I've since seen it used a lot of other places, and I thought it was just the perfect title for this series. This is basically going to be in the vein of a TBR video, but it's not going to be about books. So in these videos, I'm going to be talking about two movies, two TV shows, two animes, and two games that are new to my queue. Things that I want to play, things that I want to watch, and you guys can have the opportunity to like vote down below if you think that there's one of the two that I should watch or play first, but these are like the next two kind of things that I want to invest my time in. All right, so starting things off with TV, the first show that I'm going to talk about, which is not a new show, is Pushing Daisies. I've actually watched this before and I I really, really love this show. Like, it's one of my favorite shows of all time, but Andrew has never seen it, and it just came to HBO Max, so I thought it was a good time to give it a rewatch. It's a Brian Fuller show with a very unique premise, and I just love it. So we are following Lee Pace, Thrandrol, and he it, he plays a pie maker named Ned and he has the ability to bring dead things back to life when he touches them but there's a catch to it if he touches them a second time then they will be dead for good so his childhood best friend and crush dies and he brings her back to life but he can never touch her again otherwise she will die which is so sad and then there's a romance between them so it's like a tortured kind of thing and it's just beautiful and there's so many cute and sweet moments. On top of all of that, Ned also uses his ability to help solve murder cases. So that leads to a lot of humor and hijinks. And then Kristen Chenoweth is also on the show. She plays a girl named Olive who's been in love with Ned for a long time. And I just think this whole show is like so unique and unlike anything that I had ever seen before and have ever seen since. It's so colorful and the visuals are just really beautiful. If you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend watching it. I'm so excited to give this one a rewatch. And then the other show that I recently added to our queue is The Great, which is a show that you can watch on Hulu. I want to say it came out in like May of last year and it's loosely based on the story of Catherine the Great. Catherine is played by Elle Fanning and then we are also following Emperor Peter III, who's played by Nicholas Holt, who I loved from Warm Bodies and Skins. And and it focuses on Catherine the Great's plot to kill her husband. So from what I've heard, it definitely takes a lot of liberties when it comes to Russian history, but it's supposedly very comedic. And from what I've seen, the costumes look really beautiful. I know that this one got renewed for a second season and I really want to catch up and watch the first one before the second one ends up coming out and then I'm really far behind. Then moving on to movies, the first movie that I'm gonna talk about, which is one that is also on HBO Max, is The Earwig and the Witch. This is the newest Studio Ghibli film and it's the first of their films that is fully 3D CGI animation. So it's completely different than anything they've ever put out before. Part of like why I love Studio Ghibli so much is because I find their animation to be so beautiful. So I'm curious to see how I'm gonna feel about this one. From the movie stills that I've seen, it definitely doesn't appeal to me anywhere near as much as their past films have, but I'm obviously still going to give it a shot. So The Earwig and the Witch is based on a book by Diane Wynne-Jones, which has the same title. I'm really excited because Diane Wynne-Jones wrote Howl's Moving Castle and Studio Ghibli adapted that, and that's one of my favorite Ghibli films. So I'm really looking forward to seeing another adaptation of one of her works. This one takes place in the 1990s in England, and it's following a 10-year-old orphan girl named Earwig, who grew up her entire life not knowing that she's actually the daughter of a witch. And then this strange duo shows up at the orphanage and takes her away and she starts living with them. And I would imagine that they're probably witches, but I don't really know. So we'll see what happens. I think I'm going to try to watch this one really soon, like tonight, and I may have already watched it by the time this video is live. And then the other new movie, which is a very obvious choice, and I'm definitely going to be watching multiple times, is Always and Forever Large. Jean. I've been really highly anticipating this film. It's the third film in the To All the Boys series. Absolutely loved the first two adaptations and the third book is actually my favorite book in the series so I'm 
particularly excited for the third film. I recently rewatched the first two and I loved them just as much as I did the first you know, 10 times that I saw each of them. And this one I'm planning on watching virtually with Alexa and Rachel. In the past, we've always had like little parties at my apartment and we've gone all out getting food and like baked goods. And we usually dress in like a certain color scheme and we get decorations for my apartment. But obviously that's not something that we can do this year. So we're gonna be doing it virtually. And we decided to have like a virtual pajama party and we all got new like cute, large and approved pajamas. <laughs> so it should be fun. We're gonna watch it and then we're all gonna chat about it together. I think what I'm most excited about for this one is to see the whole cast in New York City because I, love New York City obviously and that was like part of why I loved the book so much was the field trip to New York and I'm also really excited because it seems like we're going to get a little bit more Margot in this film and I also really want to see if Jenny Han will have another cameo. Then moving on to anime. So this is a fan favorite but I have not yet watched Your Lie in April and I do really want to change that. I did read the first volume of the manga. Honestly what I remember most from it is how good the waffles look looked. <laughs> they were really beautiful and I feel like I'm gonna need to have some of those on hand when I watch the show. This one is about a young pianist who loses the ability to hear the piano when his mother passes away very suddenly. His hearing is otherwise unaffected. It's only the piano that he can't hear anymore. It truly sounds like the opposite of something that I should be watching right now, but I have just heard such good things about it that I, and I really like have wanted to watch it for quite a while. I have to decide where I am emotionally before trying to watch this one. But after two years of like not being able to hear the piano, he meets this girl who is a very free-spirited violinist and she plays it very maniacally and very like determined, whereas he was always kind of structured and rigid. So she tries to break him out of that and I believe she gets him to kind of love music again and to let go of some of the like structure that he had in the past. It does sound like maybe she is sick too too, which is why I'm like, I really don't know if I can do this, but I do really want to. So we're going to see when this happens, but it will at some point. And then the other anime that I really want to watch is Demon Slayer. This is one that I want to watch like mostly because I've seen so much of Nezuko like everywhere. There is so much fan art for her. There are so many cosplays for her. There are so many anime statues. So I really want to see the character that has like taken over. <laughs> this one follows a boy named Tanjiro and his sister named Nezuko and Nezuko has been infected by a demon. So Tanjiro and her set out because they want to try to find a cure for her. They end up getting involved in a secret society called the Demon Slayer Corps and that society has been waging a secret war trying to fight and kill demons for like centuries. Sounds like it's gonna be interesting. It's a fantasy anime and it's been a while since I've watched something fantasy based with the exception of what I'm watching right now, which is Inuyasha, which I never saw and it's so good. Moving on to games. I have a really big, really heavy game here and that is Star Wars Rebellion. This is a board game that I got. I, think I got it over the summer, like around my birthday and Andrew and I still haven't played it yet. It seems very involved, but I'm really excited to give it a try. This thing comes with so many pieces. It's like incredible. Here's the back of the box just so you can see like there are so many pieces and ships and so much. <laughs> So in this game, you can either play as the Empire or you can play as the Rebellion. And based on whichever side you're playing, you have different objectives to win. So if you play as the Imperial side, you get to command like legions of stormtroopers and fleets of TIE fighters and star destroyers, and you even get to control the Death Star too. If you are the Empire, your objective is to find the Rebellion base and destroy it, and you can also capture and even destroy planets along the way. If you play- <laughs> this is really heavy. Can we see it if we put it here? This is better. <laughs> this is better for everyone. So if you play as the Empire, 
you have a major advantage in the power department. And then if you play as the rebellion, you have much less that you can control. You only have like a couple of troopers. You have some T-47 airspeeders. You have some Corellian Corvettes and you have a couple of squadrons that you're responsible for. And if you are the rebellion, your goal is to try to convince other planets in the galaxy that the Empire is bad. You want to get them to join with you and launch a full-scale revolt. You definitely have a disadvantage because you don't have as much to control. The strategy, I believe, as for playing as the Rebellion is that you want to do targeted military attacks and that way you'll be able to steal intelligence from the Empire and that will help you, I guess, convince other people to join your cause. There are a couple of expansions to this game and if we end up liking the base game, I think we'll definitely invest in some of them. This is definitely a much pricier board game than I've ever really purchased before. It was like, I think I got it on Amazon and it was like $86. So that was even discounted, but there are over 150 pieces that this comes with. And it's supposed to be a great game for two to four players. And I've actually listened to reviews saying that it is a really good game for just two players. So that was really appealing because obviously who's having board game nights these days? Not us. <laughs> Let's see, Let's like open it actually. The worst part of new board games is all of the things that you have to punch out before you can actually play. I think there are actually two boards. So like each player gets their own board. And then like, look, like this entire thing is pieces. There are so many ships in here. <laughs> There's also really cool dice. I'm assuming these are stands for some of this, the ships. And then there are a bunch of little cards. I'm excited to give this one a shot. And then the other game that I'm gonna talk about is a video game and it is called Hades. Andrew has actually been playing this game for a little while now and he keeps talking to me about it and he keeps getting me like more and more interested in it. The game is based on Greek mythology, which is something that I love. And then also like listening to the audiobook of the annotation of the Hades Town lyrics has gotten me in the mood for like more Greek mythology stuff this month. So I think this could be something that I'll like. It does seem like it might drive me a little bit crazy because you have, basically what your character is doing is you have to try to escape from the underworld, but you have to escape like a ton of times in order to win. And I get really frustrated <laughs> in games. So I could see myself getting really mad during this one, but giving it a shot anyway, potentially handing the controls over to Andrew since I know that he can do it and just enjoying like the viewing experience. But I really like the character art, especially for Orpheus, who is like this very emo looking dude. And I'm really curious about the game. So it is a roguelike game, which means that once you die, you have to just start over from the beginning, which is something that I'm going to hate, but that's the way it is. So, so those are all of the things that are new to my many cues. Maybe you found something new in here. Maybe you've played something or watched something already. Let me know your thoughts and feelings on things, but please keep everything spoiler free for my sake and for the sake of anyone watching. Let me know what's new to your cue. And that's all that I have for this video. And I will see you guys soon in a new one. Bye.